How's it going people and welcome to RuneScape Lore. So this is a little series that talks about the backstory and some of the history of the game itself. And this one we're going to be covering the entire history of Gilinor in a nice little overview. So for those of you who know absolutely nothing whatsoever about the RuneScape Lore or any of the history or anything like that, this will give you a very very brief, quick and easy overview so you kind of understand what's going on. And what they're all on about when you start a new quest that says this is a 5th age quest or this is a 6th age quest, etc, etc. So, let's get into it then. This is the history of Gilinor. So, this is a brief history Gilinor has taught to the ordinary citizens of the kingdom of Mistalin. Be wary though, as many histories, while much that you will be told will be solid facts, some things may also have a bias favouring those in the world who were powerful at the time. Other things will be guesses and theories by historians and may turn out to be flat out wrong. Things are not always entirely what they seem. In fact, in a world like Gilinor, full of all sorts of mysteries, magic and monsters, lots of things are not what they seem. The history of Gilinor itself is divided into six distinct ages. But very little is known of the first three ages beyond a handful of myths, legends and some religious texts. The amount of history that has survived these times is next to nothing. This is partially due to the vast lengths of time involved and partially due to the great god wars of the Third Age, which brought most of the mortal races close to extinction. So let's get into it then. So, the First Age, also known as the Age of Creation. The world of Gilinor was shaped by the Elder Gods at the start of the First Age. This was to be their perfect creation, and it was their last in a long line of worlds. Theologians and priests state that for much of this time, the gods were still in the process of forming the world, and much of this time must have been spent making the various lands, seas, plants and animals. The first age is said to have lasted roughly 4,000 years. On to the second age then, also known as the Age of the Gods. Scholars have deduced that the Second Age was roughly 2,000 years long. Having laid silent and undisturbed for thousands of years, Gilinor was discovered by a young Guthix, whose desire to share the world with others meant that he opened portals to bring other peaceful beings to the world. Many of the intelligent mortal races began to form the beginnings of their great civilizations within this age, though not all of the races that rose at this time have survived into the modern ages, so we know very little of them. At this time, Guthix interacted much more directly with the mortals than the gods do in the current times, but it was never his intention to stay, believing that no god should have such influence over a world. And when he felt Gilinor was ready, Guthix went to sleep, and left the inhabitants of Gilinor to live their lives without the influence of a god. This peace was all to end though, at the beginning of the Third Age, and the Third Age soon became known as the God War Age. The Third Age itself lasted around 4,000 years and is also known as the Time of the God Wars. Stories tell of when the gods found this peaceful world of Gilinor and wanted to claim it for themselves. This desire saw new portals to the world created, with new races who desired power, not balance and harmony. As you'd expect, violence swiftly followed with great and powerful entities and agents of the gods fighting cataclysmic wars, during which time humanity could only just cling to survival. The wars raged for centuries, but they came to an end when Guthix woke from his deep slumber, when a large area of Gilinor itself was completely annihilated by Zamorak. Soon Guthix cast them out, blocking their return with his edicts, so their wars would not further damage the fragile lands. But the damage had already been done, not just to the land known as the Wilderness, but to Guthix's desire that the inhabitants would not worship the gods. Having been ruled for so long by these powerful beings, many of the mortal races stayed with their chosen deity, and continued to worship them despite them no longer being able to come to Gilinor. And thus began the Fourth Age, the Age of Mortals. The Fourth Age, sometimes known as the Age of Mortals. This lasted for roughly 2,000 years. With the God Wars over, the mortal races were at last able to multiply and prosper. There were many races competing to make their mark in the world. Humans, dwarfs, goblins, ogres, gnomes and many more all competed for land and resources. 
There was much fighting between the different races, so cultural and scientific advances were inevitably slow. To make things even harder, there were tales of strange undead necromancers who arose from time to time, summoning armies of undead skeletons and zombies, which swept across the land, destroying all in their path. During the early parts of the Fourth Age, most of the humans lived in nomadic tribes, battling to stay alive against each other and against the tribes of other races. Over time though, they started to make more permanent settlements all throughout the world. But they continued to have their war against all their neighbours. Many legends, tales and poems exist from this time and tell of the exploits of many heroes such as Robert the Strong and Arav of Avarocca. No race had supremacy within these wars for many centuries. That is until human mages on the northwest continent stumbled across ancient runic magics. The human mages learned how to create powerful magical stones known as rune stones. They began to create them in large numbers. How they made the rune stones, however, was kept a closely guarded secret between just a few of the mages, so as not to let the information fall within their enemies' hands. These stones meant that many people, not just accomplished mages, could use powerful magic. Virtually anybody with even a small amount of magical ability was able to do something with the rune stones and in turn, the humans started to become dominant throughout the world. These events mark the start of the Fifth Age, the Age of the Humans. The human settlements soon became large cities. They expanded their territories, and the human tribes combined to form larger kingdoms. The kingdoms of Mistelin and Asgarnia quickly grew to become the kingdoms of RuneScape they still are today. The mages who discovered rune magic set up a great tower of wizardry in southern Mistelin. Soon, these rune stones were spread to neighbouring human tribes, and the kingdom of Kandarin came into existence. Smaller human strongholds were also established in places such as al Karid, Karamja, as well as Entrana. For a period of time, things appeared to be going extremely well for the human kingdoms. Some people tried to stand in the way of their expansion most notably a wave of invading barbarians who objected to the use of runestones and soon rampaged throughout northern Kandarin and Asgarnia. However, the runestones were powerful enough that these kingdoms could deal with all that came their way. It was at this time though that disaster struck. At this point in time, the wizards allowed followers of Zamorak to join their ranks. This soon proved to be a fatal mistake. At a summit in the wizard's tower, the most of the powerful mages gathered the Zamorakian mages betrayed the others, igniting a great fire which raised the tower to the ground. Most of the great wizards were killed, and their great library which stored the key to much of their power was also destroyed in the process. Still, there were plenty of runes left within the world, enough that the existing kingdoms were able to adequately defend themselves from invaders, though they no longer wished to expend runes to expand their borders any further. Following the burning of the tower, there was a massive backlash against Zamorakian followers, who had previously been tolerated, if not exactly welcomed. In many areas, the Zamorakians quickly became outcasts who had to hide away from the rest of the world, though the Black Knights of the Kingdom of Asgarnia still held much political sway within that land. Thus, a relative equilibrium was found for the next 100 years. As the three great kingdoms held off all invaders, Although the wizard remained worried that the stocks of the powerful runes that they had used to protect the kingdoms were running low, the enemies of Mistelin, Asgarnia, as well as Kandarin, were beginning to find footholds in their lands again in dark corners everywhere, and new heroes arose to maintain order and prevent the collapse of civilization under the forces of evil. As with most of Galenor's history, all was not peaceful for long. The gods had been searching for a ways back into Gilinor for some time, and the path was paved with the events that took place not long after an archaeological dig unearthed an ancient home believed to belong to Guthix. As this dig was explored further, an alarm was soon set off. This triggered a number of powerful beings to head towards this source. These generals and followers of the gods knew very well what had been discovered, the resting place of Guthix. There were many reasons that these characters sought out Guthix, though most were seeking the return of the gods. How this would happen, though, varied between the groups. The guardians of Guthix stood between him and against the incoming forces, but they could not protect him, and he was soon killed by the Majora known as Sliske. 
With Guthix dead, his edict soon fell, and Gilinor was now open to the gods once more. And thus begins the Sixth Age, which brings us to the present. We find ourselves within the Sixth Age, also known as the Divine Age. This is a time of change and opportunity for all. With Gilinor no longer protected by the Edicts of Guthix, the gods can return at any time, and some already have. These gods have clawed at the world, hoping to uncover stashes of the magical energy that once prevented them from returning. With this magical energy now recognised as divine energy, the gods could become powerful enough to claim the world as their own. No one, however, can tell what will happen next. There are many that fear a return of the God Wars. Others wish for their god to return and prove that they are superior. Many followers have started gathering resources within the wilderness. Others are trying to recruit new believers to their cause. The Godless, a group who are small in number, believe, such as Guthix did, that no god should have a say in the lives of mortals. Will the World Guardian, given the power of Guthix in his dying moments, the future is now uncertain. Will a new set of edicts be formed? Will the gods rage war? Or will you take that power all for yourself? Only time will tell. This is now your story.